2.2 times faster in the Blender score. Hey, what's up? John Shred here, and today we are reviewing this Asus Strix 4090 GPU. It's been a little while, I had a hard time getting my hands on one, but I finally picked up a used one. So I'll do a full unboxing, we'll look at the card, we'll look at the size, how it compares to other cards. I will do some gaming benchmarks, workstation benchmarks, we'll look at the lighting, and I'll give you my full review on what I think. Welcome back, if this is your first time here, I like to review new tech. Right now, we are looking at GPUs. Now, this is an, I'm gonna say an oldie, but a goodie. I mean, the 4090 was the first gen to come out of the 4000 series, and this is known to be the cream of the crop, the highest end card. That's why it was so expensive, it took me so long to get one, but we have one now. Let's get it out of the box so you can see it firsthand and how it compares to some of the cards. RG Strix, ta-da, okay. Card, now, interesting box, uh, a lot of foam. Actually, the cables and goodies are underneath the foam. Uh, take this out. Manual, a four eight pin power connector, which I don't recommend using. Like I say, I have a video here just with a with 12, a 12 volt dedicated options. Uh, check that out. And then also your uh, cable, or not cable sag, your card sag. Uh, there's one right here in action with this 4070 Ti Strix that you can, you can see there. Uh, pretty standard with all Strix cards. Okay. Okay, here is the card. It is quite massive. Um, sh sh thick, right? Um, you know, you have your 12 volt power connector here, your, your BIOS switch here for performance mode or quiet mode. Uh, what else? The back. And here, something that I, that I did miss on the 4080, which is also on the 4090, is there's two WPM fan connectors on the end of the card. I don't know who's going to use that. If you need to connect a couple more case fans, I, I, it just seems odd that someone thought that that was a good idea. I mean, hey, you let me know if you have used it, has come in handy, I don't know. I certainly have not used it. Other than that, the car looks pretty standard. Let me grab, I know the 4080 and 4090 are pretty much identical in size. So uh, let me grab, well here's a, just for fun, a 3090, just to show the generation difference. Uh, there's a solid inch on the end here. If I lift these up too, you can see how much taller the 4090 is. It's half inch, at least taller. Uh, power connectors are coming out of the 3090 uh, on the top here and they have it in the middle. So they have changed the location uh, thickness wise. Yeah, it's way, way thicker. So nothing new there. Uh, let me grab. Uh, here's my, my mock-up of what a 4070 Ti, a Zotac 4070 Ti Trinity looks like. Um, much smaller, see the length? Uh, there's like a solid inch shorter, uh, even even taller. Um, yeah, that's my, my fun mock-up here. Let me grab the 4070 Strix that's out of the system here, and we'll compare that. Okay, here is a 4070 Ti Strix. Check out that video here, I just released that one. Uh, it, size-wise, it is just as tall. So uh, consider that. Now length-wise, you have uh, probably three quarters of an inch shorter uh, or longer with the 4090. Uh, and thickness, I mean, they're very, very similar. The 4090 is slightly, 
slightly wider. Uh, but considering, like I said, I just looked at the performance on this 4070 Ti, it's pretty amazing, especially the thermals. Uh, I expect to see something similar with the 4090, just the size of these cards is, is pretty amazing what they've done. Okay, let's put this 4070 Ti over here. And let's get this 4090 into my uh, Corsair 5000D. This is my, my test bench system. It's a 12900KS with 32 gigs of RAM. It's just, it's something that I, I like to use as a, as a base benchmark for all the GPUs I test. Uh, and it's also just a, a pretty solid mid-tier size case, so you can get an idea how it would fit. How's that looking for SAG? It's actually pretty good, but you know what? Let's add this in, lower it down. It's lowest setting. That's much better. All right, let's turn this on, see how it looks. Sweet. I mean, the lighting hasn't changed in any of these 4000 series cars. You have your kind of Gamers of Republic and, and some LEDs around the end. Size-wise, lots and lots of room in this case. So if you do have a mid-size case like this, I would have no no concerns at all. Most of the other 4090s, I even put into a Lian Lee 11 d Mini, and they all fit fine. So uh, definitely check the, the, the measurements online uh, with your case before you buy it, especially with an expensive car like this. But, I mean, easy, lots of room. Recommend using a dedicated cable for the power. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let, let me shut this down, we'll put on the test bench, and we will start to get some benchmarks. I will be right back. Three days later. All right, first thing first, yes, this Strix 4090 fits inside a Fractal North case. I'll post some B-roll here. I have a full build, I will post it up, uh, and you can see the process of me installing it. But it does fit. It is very, very tight, but it fits. Now let's jump into the workstation performance first. I wanted to focus on this section first, just because, I mean, if you are spending $2,000 on a gaming GPU, I mean, you know it's gonna be pretty good, but I have a feeling that some of you are looking at this card for workstation performance. So I ran the Blender benchmarking tool and it absolutely crushed it. Now you say, okay, well, by how much, John? Well. I mean, I had that uh, gigabit 3090 that I was using as my main driver for a while. And I'll say I'm primarily a workstation user. I, I mean, I, I do my work, I video edit uh, for me, and I do a tiny little bit of gaming. So for me, the comparison, I really wanted to see how, you know, the jump from the 3090 to the 4090. 2.2 times faster in the Blender score. Now jumping over to Premiere Pro, the Puget benchmark tool for it, uh, I mean, the 4090 here scored a 993. What does that mean? Well, I mean, I compared it to when I did this same test with a 3090 Ti, and it scored high around like 1,074. I'll say it now, and I've said it again, your GPU does not make a significant difference in video editing. Scrubbing the timeline, most of the things you work on is all CPU intensive. I figured this out the hard way when I had my old Ryzen 2700X, and I started to do 4K footage. Ooh, it did not like it. It wasn't until I upgraded to a 5800X that I was able, I was able, blah, blah, blah. I was finally able to scrub some 4K footage. But now you say, okay, well, what about DaVinci Resolve? Well, it's the first time I've really done the Puget Bench test with DaVinci Resolve. So, I mean, here, what did I get? Uh, I mean, I scored, and, and please tell me in the comments down below if, if this is a good score or what you think, but I ended up getting a 2603 with my 1900 KS with 32 gigs of RAM and this Strix 4090. Now bonus, I did just finish building uh, that, that Fractal North uh, system I was telling you about with a, a Ryzen 7950X. I went with the X and not the X3D because I want the workstation side of things. 
And what did I score? Uh, it does have 64 gigs of RAM, both running at, at 6,000 megahertz, uh, but it scored 2753. So 100 points higher. Yeah. Newer CPU, possibly. Uh, but those are still pretty close scores. Lastly, I tried testing the Puget Bench Photoshop plugin and I saw very similar results to Premiere Pro. No real significant difference with a 4090. The moral of the story, if you're using Photoshop, Premiere Pro, you don't need a 4090. It's absolute overkill. Stick to a 3070, stick to an older generation card, uh, something that allows multiple monitors. Like I said, you do not need uh, the GPU acceleration. There are specific cases in video editing where it can use the video acceleration, but in most cases, it's not required. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please smash that like button and uh, subscribe if you're into this uh, kind of content. All right, by now, it, it's been eight, nine months since the 4990 came out. You know that it is an absolute monster when it comes to games. It is the fastest GPU available on the market right now, and this Strix 4090 is certainly. Now we're comparing this card to its competitor, which I'm gonna say is the MSI Supreme. It, I mean, it, it, it was literally neck and neck. Uh, the Supreme beat it with a couple tests, the, the Strix with a couple more. Uh, to me, they were uh, on par with each other. I was just playing some Diablo 4 with it and I mean at 1440p with everything cranked to the max I was getting a solid 280 frames per second. Uh, if I decided to turn on some DLSS 3.0 with frame generation it literally bumped it up to mid 300s on the performance setting. If I went to high performance it was just shy of that 400 frames per second cap. To say the least, if you're buying this card for gaming, you will not be disappointed. It's amazing. Now I recently had somebody uh, leave a comment on my the Strix 4070 Ti video that I just finished posting, check it out here. And I, I wanna read it to you because it says, the Strix is for overclockers. It is the only PCB with additional voltage controller solder points and a control chip and has raised power limits out of the box. If you are a serious overclocker, the Strix variant is the winner. For all I know, he, he, he works for Asus, but he isn't wrong. In all my tests that I did, uh, comparing when I overclocked the Strix versus overclocked the Supreme, the Strix destroyed it across the board. Now, I mean, destroyed two to 3% better than everything else, but it definitely was better. Now, is, is that because the MSI decided to limit their power draw to 520 and 530 watts on their air and liquid cooled cards. Meanwhile, the Strix allows the full 600 watts, much like the FE. From what I saw, the added power draw past 525 doesn't really seem to make a difference, but maybe Ace has done something special. When I compared the Strix score overclock scores to the FE scores, both at 600 watts, the Strix wins every time. I mean, I, I, what's Asus's secret sauce? Asus, if you're watching this, leave a comment down below, let us know. And there isn't a whole lot to say about the lighting for this card. I kind of showed it off when I booted earlier. It's the same as the 4080, same as the 4070 Ti. Like I said, I still like the 3000 series better. Um, I did have the same issue that I had with the 4070 Ti, that when I booted it up, the Republic of Gaming LEDs on the side plus the ring around the end kind of here uh, they did not light up until I went into the armory crate application and did an aura kit update so something to keep in mind interesting enough I, I recently read an article you know posted here uh, from WCCF tech about uh, Ace's newest that are the highest end card the 4090 matrix GPU uh, and Asus was saying that to help with coil wind, they've actually uh, replaced with new inductors to help with coil wind. Um, I don't think this card that I got here is one of the new ones because it had a tiny little bit. And I mean, 
a tiny, tiny little bit. I wouldn't even, like, you'd have to put your ear up to it. Very similar to the 4070 Ti video I said, uh, it, it was hardly noticeable, but it was there. Now I will post just, just some video here of uh, booting up and the audio levels. Last time when I did this with the 4070 Ti, I increased the audio level so you could hear it. And people were like, oh, it's so loud. It actually really wasn't. I'm gonna leave this totally plain Jane. I won't edit the audio. So you probably won't hear anything, but I think it's better that way. If you're looking for a car that's silent, I mean, this one was pretty good for me. And I'm pretty sure in that clip, you heard more the Arctic Freezer 2 280 mil trying to cool that monster 7950X than you did the GPU. Oh, but but back on coil wine for a bit, uh, I did have another commenter on one of my other videos uh, and he pointed me towards this neat list that's on a forum. It's on the Hardware Lux forum and someone has taken essentially an inventory of all of the GPUs and then taken, uh, I guess, historically based on what people are experiencing with coil wine, if there is any. So for someone who's buying a car, you can check out that list. I will post a link down below. Check it out. Uh, huge thanks to uh, Dark Bizkit for, for sharing the, the link. If you have information like that, that, that you wanna share, please put it in the comments. I do read every single one, so thank you, thank you. This is by far the most expensive 4090 GPU on the market. It's sitting at $2,000 US and this is the reason I have not reviewed it. Uh, I, I mean, you may not know, I, I buy all these cards and, and then resell them afterwards. So it, it's, it's a pricey one. Now you can find it on Best Buy right now for $50 off. There are sales here and there, so please shop around. But I mean, this card is literally 200 to $250 more, like 10, 10, 15% more than an MSI Supreme air cooled. Now I said that it was faster than the Supreme went over clock, but it certainly isn't 10 to 15% faster. So, I mean, when it comes to value, there's this, this A6, ASUS tax that people talk about. I mean, also if you get a white tax, the color tax, that, that's a whole different thing. But the question is, do you buy the Strix to get that slightly better performance knowing that it'll cost you a little bit extra? I mean, for me, ah, like I say, my favorite 4090 so far is still the MSI Gaming X Trio coming in at $1,600 US. That's $400 cheaper, same price as the FE card. Yeah, it doesn't perform as well. There's more cases of coil wine, but to conclude, I mean, if you are using, you wanna get one of these uh, Strix for workstation, as long as it's 3D related workstation, it will destroy it and it will do extremely, extremely well. Gaming, amazing, top of the line, no concerns there. I mean. This is an incredible card. It is definitely the best card for overclocking. Uh, it, it fits inside a Fractal North case, which is amazing. I mean, definitely high, high, high on my list of cards to suggest. But as always, what's my plan? Well, if you've been watching the channel for a bit, you know I don't keep my cards very long. I will be selling this and then replacing it with the brand new Asus ProArt 4070 Ti. Slap it in that Fractal North case with the ProArt motherboard, do a kind of full, full build together. I'm pretty excited, so stay tuned for the next one. See ya.